Hello, people. Lek here. I am back with a review of my newest acquisition, the VK90. Now, I've been gone for ages. I was traveling for a long time, had horrible Wi-Fi issues, but I'm back. I'm not lagging as much. I'm home again, and I have a new toy, the VK90. It was not a cheap toy, but it's a fantastic tank. I've wanted to get this tank for a long time. And I'll do a quick review of the tank and just kind of talk about why I like it and why or why you shouldn't buy it because it is very expensive. Um, so let's get right to the most important part, which is the armor. So on paper, it says the tank has... 10 degrees of gun depression, but that is not entirely accurate. So I've got it in Armor Inspector, which shows the gun depression, and you can see the front of the tank, when the turret is in the front, it is actually 4 degrees of gun depression. As you rotate to the sides, it's about 5, now it's 6, and all the way down to 10 when you are off to this angle right here, it's 10 degrees. So you do have 10 degrees off to the sides, but the front is only four. So this requires a lot of very careful uh, angling of the tank to get your gun depression. Now, when you get to 10, you will expose the sides, of course. So you have to um, pay very close attention to where you're aiming. And I'll look at the armor here on Blitzhanger. It's a little bit easier to see. The front armor is fantastic. So let's look at the turret first. The only weak points are right here on the cheek, which is still over 300 millimeters, very high. The hatch that's about 200 there, but it's a tiny hatch. It's really hard to hit. It's almost nobody ever hits that hatch because it's so small. Much smaller than the hatch that you'd see on like the uh, E75 or the VK45, which is what this tank is really based on, which is the tier nine heavy. Uh, upper glaze is fantastic. I mean, look at this, 400, even straight on, you're looking 360. I mean, it's really strong. Lower plate is a weak point. Still at 250 millimeters, you'll bounce a ton of shots from uh, medium tanks. And what makes the tanks great is, of course, it's a fantastic side scraper. Turrets mounted in the back, and let's say you're angled like this, side scraping against the wall, and you're looking at essentially an auto bounce. Even down here, you're looking at below the track, you're looking at 700. So no one's going to pin you when you are in the side scraping position. It has got phenomenal front armor. Sides are, you know, not bad, 140. Back is not bad, but the... Let's face it, if somebody's seeing this part, they're going to pin you unless you're complete idiots. Always face front. One point to be careful of is the deck. It's 60 millimeters. If somebody is way above you and has gun depression, they are going to nuke you right here. Be very careful when people are above you. It also flattens this armor here in the upper glaciers. So just don't let anybody get above you. Um, let's do a quick comparison of the stats. I've got it compared here to the Moss and the VK-72. And... The 72 really does not compare to this tank, I'll be honest. I put it up here just for the hell of it, but the real comparator to me is actually the Moss. I think the VK90 is a frontline tank. It's got fantastic armor, and it actually has a very good gun. And you can see, it, it, you think it's the same gun as the Moss. It is that 128-millimeter German cannon, but it is actually different. Classic wargaming fashion, they gave the premium tank better uh, gun handling and gun stats in general. So first thing you see is the pen. Compared to the Moss, this gun that is almost identical has 275 AP pin versus 246, which is a huge difference. Also, the premium ammo, 320 versus 311. That extra 10 makes a huge, huge difference. I actually don't have to calibrate the shells on this gun. They work just fine as is. Also, in the aim time is lower. The dispersion is slower. And, of course, you have the 10 degrees to the side. Now, the Moss has 8 degrees all the way around, which is a nice advantage. This does not. Mobility, of course, is better than the mouse because it's much, much lighter. It's not a very heavy tank. Um, the only thing to note here is you'll see the hit points, uh, wherever the hell it is, are, uh, there it is, sorry, yeah, 2450. It's not actually correct. The mouse is 3000, of course, and I'll show you why, because this tank has the enhanced sandbag armor, and you put that on along with the Improved assembly, and your hit points are actually 2744, which is fan 
fantastic. So as we said, I showed earlier, DPM is good at 20, uh, almost 2,600. Uh, I absolutely love this tank. Let's take a, a look at a couple of replays and show you why this tank is so good. Okay, replay number one. I am at Immelsdorf. I'm tuning with Ronan, who's in a super conch. And we are, of course, heading right to the D cap area. Um, so this is a great match because it kind of showed how this tank can hold a line. Um, because the armor is so good if you're not, you know, driving out sideways like an idiot. So right away we see there's a 113 here. Uh, I noticed B is being capped. Our two meds are going to A. There's a Kronwagen sitting at D. He pens me on the hatch here. You can see it right there. I actually looked at that a couple of times. It was a very good shot. He, he got a little bit lucky. He never got lucky again, I'll tell you that. Um, great shot. So, I mean, this gun has terrific gun handling. I mean, it's not a laser gun, but for a heavy, uh, the dispersion's low, the aim time's low. It's really easy to hit shots like I just did against that 183. Again, look at that. I didn't even fully aim and hit the lower plate on the E3 right there. It's, so, again, I'm hauled down. I, nothing's exposed to get my turret. It was a lucky hatch by the Kron on my hatch. Lucky shot. Normally it doesn't happen, so don't worry about things like that. You can see it right there where he hit me. But um, I'm just kind of holding this. I'm trying to get shots on anybody who's going to give me shots. E3 is pushing forward in the open, which is naturally what you always want to do. Just drive out in the open against the whole team. Very smart guy. Um, so I'm just trying to clear him as quick as possible. It's a really strong tank. That was just an unfortunate bounce, and he just got me right back. I, I looked to the right, which was a mistake, so I exposed the cheek. Stupid move on my part. I gave him 600 hit points. But he's just standing there like an idiot, so I'm going to just keep putting shots into him. The Kron is trying to hit me again. He bounces the hatch. I told you it wasn't going to happen again. He got lucky. And, of course, the yellowing now begins. Now, Ronan and I are completely alone here against basically seven tanks. And our TDs are behind us. I, I don't know what they're doing, but you can see our meds finally moved in. But it, it took a long time. So we basically held off seven people for, let's see, almost two and a half minutes. Now, this 113 has way more DPM than me, so it is a problem. Thankfully, my Jaeger finally decided to come in and help, but Ronan is gone, but he did a great job holding the right side while I held the left side with um, some TDs behind us. I, I don't know what they were doing. I think they were on vacation, but it kind of showed you just me being in that corner. I was able to hold them off for a really long time. I only blocked 800 damage. It wasn't a lot of block damage, but it was the fact that they couldn't push because they couldn't take me out, and that was the key. And it was long enough until our TDs came in and, and you know, or I'm sorry, our meds came in and finally um, held them off. So uh, a nice match. Looking at match number two, um, I am at the, uh, oh, this stupid map, I forget the name of it, the uh, Garbage Castle of Tier 1, I don't know what the hell it's called. I'm in this burning mode, which is really not important here um, it's a horrible new mode they're doing in the game right now I absolutely cannot stand it but I got a great match with this tank in this mode which is why I featured it so let's ignore the uh, the burning mode and the moron yelling MAGA as we start driving off um, I just wanted to show how this tank can side scrape so effectively in here in this tank I'm always going to go to C cap um, now I know I'm being a bit aggressive here which is a little risky and I think I eat a yeah I eat a shot right here from this bad shot. And this is one issue you're going to have with this tank is idiots getting in your way when you're trying to side scrape. People do not understand side scraping. I mean you've got a moron in ice age. So I had to eat another shot because I said I could get into position because of him. You have to do a lot of pushing when you're in this tank. Just shove people out of your way. Get in the side scraping position. Eventually they will leave. I mean you got to take control of the situation. Otherwise you're going to get creamed. I mean you saw eight. A shot from E75 on my way in. Now I'm in position. My, my lower glacis is covered up. E75 is never going to pen my hatch. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. And, and I can just easily shred him. I got great pen on this gun. DPM is good. And I'm just tearing him apart. You notice he is just bouncy shot after shot on me. He can't do anything to me. And it's just too easy. Look how big and juicy that hatch is. AP around right to the hatch. 490. Mm hmm. 
and the whole team is behind me using me as cover, which is great. That's what this tank should do. This is the front line tank. Your other tanks should be behind you. As long as they don't block me from backing up, which they're not doing. The E5 did a nice job. He gave me the space to back up when I needed to, and he used me as cover, which I thought, you know, was actually what he should have done. And we completely dominated. We just, they, they could do nothing. Um, even though the rest of my team, I've got some good players on this team, but most of them are idiots, but it didn't matter because I held the entire sea cap by myself. And we are just able to farm off these guys. It's clear the grill with an easy HE shot. So, I mean, it just sits there in, in these positions. It, it was born for a spot like this where you can just side scrape easily. I do not know how I balanced that shot. That was just a bad miss from this guy in the posh. But, so again, I'm pushing forward and just going to do another side scrape position. With this tank, you really, that's all you do. You just... Find side, side scraping locations and you just go from one to the next, keeping the lower glacis covered, keep yourself pointing forward, and, and don't give anybody you know shots at the side. People are not gonna be able to do anything to you. The armor is amazing. This is definitely the best side scraping tank in the entire game. It's better than the mouse. Because the cheeks, this the mouse has much bigger cheeks. This does not have them. It's just a fabulous tank, and, and obviously this also has better traverse than the mouse too, so it's very easy to rotate it. In my opinion, I mean, if you're if you're a smart player and you know how to use it, this has a lot more, and you'll see in the next match what I'm talking about. Because of the minus 10 on the sides, this can go to a lot of places that the mouse can't, and a lot of other tanks can't either, um, even something like an IS-4, because you do actually have better gun depression than a lot of those tanks, and that's a nice advantage. So, anyway... The burning mode aside, it was just a really nice hold. You saw the damage, 4,600, but that doesn't really matter. It's just the fact that I was able to bounce thousands of HP. Um, going into match number three, this is the most interesting match. This is why I saved it for the end, and I'm at mines. Normally, you'd say, okay, what am I doing here? I've got four degrees of gun depression on the side, but I'm actually going to go to the hill because, I, you know, again, you've got 10 on the – I'm sorry, 40 degrees on the front, 10 on the side, so – you wouldn't think I could take, go up the hill on mines, but I can because you just have to basically know how to angle the tank, be really careful, and pay close attention, and this works. You can take this tank almost anywhere because of that 10 degrees on the sides. And you don't need 10 degrees. I mean, if I'm looking like just slightly over to the side, I can get 8, 7, which is plenty right here on this hill. Right away, I get a nice shot at the 62. I, I'm not going to push it up. Notice, I've got tanks in front and on both sides of me. If I push it up, I'm exposing the sides. I'm going to eat 800 from this guy. Uh, I'm not going to do that. So I'm staying on this lower point right here, keeping just my turret pointing out, and, and then I'm keeping the lower glaciers and the upper glaciers even covered in this point because I, I just want to keep the sides covered up. There is no reason to push, especially with a T-62 up on the hill. And my number one target is this Jaeger because he's preventing me from focusing on the other parts of the hill because if I show on my side, I'm going to take 800 damage. So I'm just keeping him in front of me and then I backed up to keep the 62 from being able to shoot me and he's slowly but surely being whittled down. Um, I eat a nice shot from the ice who was somehow not spotted. He became unspotted and that was a mistake, but... I pushed forward a little too far. 62 is clear, so now my life's just a lot easier. Now I can stop worrying about the left side. I can just focus on the IS-4 and the Jaeger. And I'm just basically being patient, something I don't do often enough, but you have to be patient. And this tank really helps you be a patient player because it doesn't have, you know, this yellowing capability. So you just sit there, you hold the spot. I'm holding the hill essentially by myself. There's a ML-2 with me. I don't know what he's doing, but uh, he's not doing much. If I was with him, I would have pushed. A, if I was him, I would have pushed a little bit further. So I can tell that he's just going to sit back. He's lost all his hit points because he was an idiot. Slowly but surely, whittling away at this Jaeger. Ice four is doing nothing. He doesn't have the gun depression to do with me, which is great because I'm staying low on the hill, so I can pen the sides. I told you the gun has plenty of pen. Blocked another shot already. 2400 block. Just keeping him at bay. He doesn't have the gun depression either, and his cheeks are easily penable to me. That was unfortunate. I got him tracked, which is great, but I didn't do any damage. But this guy, IS-4, I'm guessing his head fell on the keyboard. I don't know. Um, they're losing the left side, which is becoming concerning, but I can't defocus. If I back up off the hill, we're going to lose the match. So I just have to hope they can hold it. 
I got a little bit greedy there and the grill popped me right inside of the turret. You can see that big hole. That was a stupid mistake. That was me being impatient again. I just was worried about clearing the Jaeger because I could tell that we were losing this game. And at this point, I actually thought we were going to lose. I've got teammates that just don't seem to really want to do anything. And uh, I got a bad bounce there. But the game is kind of looking like a stalemate at this point. I, I, I'm pulling up my gun just in case he gets lucky with a hatch spamming shot. And I will tell you, this Jaeger is not a bright guy. If he had just shot HE at me, he would have probably had my hit points way, way lower. Because that gun, if you HE splash someone, it'll still do 3 400 damage every time. If he'd done that, I would have a lot less hit points than I do. But he is insisting on shooting heat. And it's not working. That was just a bad miss. I don't know. The gun just decided to veer left and, sh and miss. But I've got him down to a two shot. Ice 4 is not really doing anything. So I'm not having to worry about him. He occasionally pops up. See, again, I would have had a shot, but I had to turn my hull to get the bounce. And so when I turned my hull to the left, it pulled the gun up and I missed. Uh, I think in the end that was better anyway, because I would have eaten that, that round for sure. So just something that happens that you get used to with the tank. My ML2, I guess, got bored, decided to yell all into their team. It did get this guy to turn, which got me a good shot AP into him. He caught fire. Now he's down to nothing, basically. And naturally, when you get down to very low hit points, that's exactly when you want to push. Yeah, of course. Smart guy. Ice 4 has left, obviously, so it's him and the grill in the back. I know the Ice 4 is basically full hit points, so I'm going to not bother with him. I really want to get this grill out of the way. Um, I, I tried to go help these guys, but he's behind the rock, and I just if I go out there, I know the grill's going to hit me. So I decided to just see if I can get the grill spotted by going to the top of the hill. I know at this point I'm not spotted, so I should be able to get on top, unless the grill has moved. But most people are going to stay all the way back with the grill. I noticed not to top knock the tree over because that would tell them I'm here. And I'm going to the top. I figure these two guys could at least keep the eyes for busy while I go look for the grill. That's the advantage that we have in having a three on two. And I spotted the grill, and here I make a stupid mistake. I went to the right. Um, first of all, oh, well, that was an HE shot that pen for no damage, which was unfortunate. But I went to the right. I should have gone to the left. You'll see why in a second, because I made this stupid assumption that my teammates would actually be focusing the IS-4. So I had an HE shot, hit the cannon, and now another one go for 300. If I just shot AP, this guy would already be dead, so that was kind of stupid. But So here I'm in a nice side scrape position, and of course the IS-4 hits me from behind, because my two buddies back there are doing God knows what. Never count on your teammates, folks. Um, normally... The, you know, in the position I was in, the grill could not pen me at all because uh, I was side scraping against that rock. But now, because I went to this side, I swore got a nice shot at me from from behind. So my friends are uh, not doing anything very nice. Uh, racism, lovely. I got to clear this grill. Do not come out sideways. Go up to the rock. Turn around. Takes three extra seconds. Now you can't be pinned. You notice he had to wait. He was looking for a spot. And by the time he figured out where to shoot me, he was already dead. And uh, we're running out of time, but my two, uh, let's call them buddies here, have done enough to get this IS-4 down to a one-shot. So they did do something. I do appreciate that. And I'm able to clear them with 20 seconds left in the match. 4,300 damage blocked. And at mines, I'm able to run the hill. I mean, truly, truly uh, a great match in this tank. To quickly summarize, should you buy this tank? Well, it sort of depends. If you are... First of all, can you afford it? Of course, it's really expensive at 20,000 gold without the camo. Um, if you have money to, to spend um, and you are a player who wants to play tier 10 and wants to have a tank that actually makes credits, this does actually make a lot of credits. Um, and you have the skill. This requires a lot of skill. I'm not the world's greatest player, but I have enough experience and skill to handle a tank that requires this much angling and constantly concentrating on your angles and your side scraping. If you have the money to spend and you are a skilled player, you'll absolutely do great in this tank. I highly recommend it. If you're just new to the game, save your money. Spend it on something else. Um, go get the stupid Annihilator that's now available for $10, basically, and is completely going to dominate Tier 7. That's a better way to spend money. But again, uh, it's definitely worth it if you have the money and you have the skills to use it. It's a, it's a phenomenal tank. 
I highly recommend it in those circumstances. Hope you enjoyed the review. And if you buy this tank, have fun with it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel.